Well, good day, campers, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Camp Cryptid. I'm your host, Erica Fett, and I'd like to thank everyone so much for hanging out for last episode, all about my favorite creature of the deep seas, the Kraken. Now, anything that's a maritime mystery or a beloved sea creature is my absolute favorite topic to talk about. So thank you all for blessing me with being able to bond with y'all about all the weird giant squid and Kraken stories. Now, today we are chatting more about creepy stories and campfire tales, not just from me, but from you listeners as well. I always get a ton of you writing in with crazy weird experiences that you all have had. So now we get to hang out and bond over more creepy and unexplained things. So kicking off today's campfire tales is a story from Taylor. And Taylor says, hey, Erica, it's Taylor again from the last Campfire Tales. I'm sending this to you not so much as another submission, but as another Bigfoot enthusiast. What I think will excite you is that this is a story from your home state and is very recent. My oldest son and I had gone on a Bigfoot expedition this past weekend in Salt Fork Park due to it being the Bigfoot capital of Ohio. On Saturday the 8th of June 2024, we had decided to hike Morgan's Knob Trail in the early afternoon. Upon entering the trail, we noticed that there were no normal animal sounds such as birds and insects. My son had taken a stick and did a tree knock, which we then heard one in response. Jokingly, I did a whoop in that direction. Within 30 seconds, we heard a short, deep, guttural roar coming back at us that sent chills down my spine. We had the overwhelming feeling of being watched in that section. I knew it wasn't human, bear, or even a vehicle after ruling everything out first. I have been on many expeditions, including that park, before and have never heard anything like it. I hope this helps you in your research and furthers your hunt for answers. Well wishes, Taylor and Eli. Well, thank you so much, Taylor, for sending that in. And I also want to say it's so cool that you went on a Bigfoot expedition in Salt Fork. For those of you not from Ohio, Ohio, as much as a lot of people don't think it would be popular for Bigfoot activity, is I think last time I checked like number seven on Bigfoot activity in states in the United States. So it's kind of high up there. We also in Ohio have a ton of cornfields, like I said, but we also have so many cave systems and beautiful parks. So Ohio has a lot of forest and a lot of places that these little Bigfoot can go and hide. Also, I wanted to kick off this episode with Bigfoot stuff because y'all know I love Bigfoot. It's probably, you know, I joke around about the Flatwoods monster and the Kraken being my favorite, but Bigfoot is one that I have loved since I was a child. And I like to thank, you know, Harry and the Hendersons for that and all of the fun Bigfoot love back in the 80s when I was growing up. So it always makes my day to hear more stories. And then, you know, as I started researching more about Bigfoot, finding out about the Ohio grassman sightings that have happened in Ohio for centuries is always really really, really fun to read about. I actually have like binders of manila folders full of like articles that I've printed out from newspaper.com and just from all the weird sightings over the past couple, you know, hundreds of years that have been documented. So hearing stories like this, Taylor, totally makes my day and it makes me also want to go on a Bigfoot expedition now. (laughs) And also, for those of you not aware, uh, Salt Fork is also where the Bigfoot Conference is held in Ohio. So it's a lot of fun um, activity for Bigfoot here in Ohio. And it makes me very proud to be a Buckeye sometimes, you know. I'm assuming that Bigfoot is also a proud Buckeye, so... So thank you so much, Taylor. And also, if anybody has also been out to uh, Salt Fork and has had any weird Bigfoot experiences, please write in. So maybe I can do a whole big Bigfoot episode because I haven't really, like, other than the abominable snowman and the Yeti, I really haven't done a Bigfoot-focused episode. What am I doing? (laughs) So yeah, thanks so much again, Taylor. And happy hunting, right? (laughs) So this next story is going to be from John, and John says, Hello, Erica. I just listened to your episode about the Bell Witch, and I am a paranormal storyteller living in Nashville, just 45 minutes from Adams, Tennessee. I wanted to let you know that the stories of the haunting of the Bell Witch are still happening. People are still seeing the black wolf that they believe that Katie Batts could transform into, and they still see the girl in the green dress sometimes along the riverbank adjacent to the farm. People are still experiencing her voice and other phenomenon. If you ever 
ever feel like interviewing someone who tells these stories daily, I would love to collaborate. I am also the host of Back to the Serial Box podcast and its spinoff show called Cryptid Crunch. Anyway, you do a great show and I love it a lot. Keep up the great work. Well, thanks so much, John. And heck yeah to more Cryptid Crunch uh, podcast. I love that. I, you know, I, I love that everybody's out there just having so much fun, you know, telling these stories and really like capturing the imagination of everybody and and just bonding over storytelling. And it really makes my day when, you know, I can talk to other podcast hosts. So absolutely. And with that being said, if anybody else is a podcast host out there, uh, let me know, drop a line sometime. I, you know, not only going to conventions and events, I would love to like meet up with more podcast hosts and uh, have a cute little fun network. So thanks so much, John. Now, when it comes to the Bell Witch, the first thing that spurred my interest in the Bell Witch was not only a campfire tale about the Bell Witch Cave, but obviously the Blair Witch Project, which kind of like tapped into the Bell Witch, right? So being able to go to Adams, Tennessee one day would be my dream come true because I want to go to the Bell Witch Cave. I want to go to the area where the, the farm was. I know they have a couple of markers on the property that kind of signify where the Bell Witch uh, story happened. So with that being said, I also love Tennessee. (laughs) My parents were thinking about moving to Tennessee and I was like, yes, please do so I can go hiking and just go visit all of the fun trails and also, Tennessee is full of like crazy stories of things happening there in uh, the mountains. So, you know, Tennessee has its own little uh, lore and folklore and I love it. And the Bell Witch is a story that has always kind of captivated me. You know, ever since I did the episode on the Bell Witch, I've really wanted to go there. So I'm going to beg my husband now to let's take like a two day excursion there to Adams, Tennessee and do some little investigating ourselves. <laughs> So yes, thank you so much, John, and everybody go check out that podcast. We, we love to support other podcasts here at Camp Cryptid. This next story is going to be from Greg, and Greg says, Are you familiar with the little people of indigenous folklore, Paisake and the Miami and Sauk Fox tribes? I have had two encounters in my life, and the first was in North Dakota in 1988, and then again here in Iowa in 2022. If you would be interested in the stories, I would be happy to tell you. So, Greg, if you're listening, I need those stories right now. (laughs) It's like dangling candy above my head and being like, do you want this? And the answer is yes, I absolutely want to hear those. So, Greg, I would love to hear more about that. And um, thank you so much for writing in because now now you have my interest (laughs) peaked. So this next story is going to be from David. And David says, Hi, Erica. This is David Kay. I hope you are doing well. So here's a weird experience. Not earth shattering, but a little creepy. And it's completely fresh as it just happened this morning. I live on the third floor of an apartment building in the center of town. There is much traffic and activity in the street during the day and evening, but overnights are very quiet. I woke up around 2 a.m. this morning. Nothing in particular woke me, not a loud noise, nor my cat jumping in the bed. As I settled down to try to go back to sleep, I noticed a repetitive sound, not particularly loud, but audible in the still of the night coming from outside. It sounded like a voice. I opened a window and listened carefully. It was a voice saying soon, soon, over and over. I'm convinced it was a recording rather than someone repeating the words live. The acoustics of the downtown area, with all the tightly packed buildings taller than those in a regular residential area, can amplify and carry sounds, especially at night when there is little going on. As a result, it was difficult to determine the distance from the source of the sound. I went back to bed and woke up an hour later, with the sound still repeating outside. Finally, I dozed off and then woke at 4.30 a.m., The sound has stopped by then. Very strange. Again, not a world-shaking event, but sufficiently weird and unsettling. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this minor anecdote of the bazaar. Let's see if I hear the sound again in the future. Wow, that is actually kind of weird, David, because even if it was a recording, (laughs) what is someone doing at like 2 a.m. playing a recording over and over? (laughs) And, you know, and the weird thing is, is that's strange, but also if it wasn't, a recording. <laughs> what could it have been? So I have no idea. Like I said, I love these stories because sometimes, you know, you get completely stumped and baffled. You're just like, I, I got nothing. <laughs> 
So yeah, David, that is really weird and definitely spooky. And also, side note, everybody at Camp Fire Tales, David here writing in is actually who introduced me to the Bridgewater Triangle. So I like to thank David so much for bringing that up to me because that was a fun topic to dive into. And I did a Bridgewater Triangle episode recently, which I even said I might have to do a part two because there's a lot going on there. So... And that's why I really want to thank everybody too, real quick, uh, like David and everybody writing in, because I always talk about how there are so many cryptids, right? There are so many stories and so many urban legends all around the world. And while I am just one woman, there are so many that I'm still learning about to this day. Um, You know, hauntings around people's hometowns and stories of poltergeists. There's cryptids that, you know, may be known in a different area, maybe have like pop-ups, you know, around your area. So, I really want to thank everybody so much for, you know, participating in in Camp Cryptid because it really does make my day when I find out new little topics to explore and dive into. So, yeah. So, this next story is going to be from Dr. Corey. And Corey says, Ghostly Encounters. The Alamo. To start, in San Antonio, there is a company called Slab Cinema. They show outdoor movies throughout the year. One year, they showed the 1960 The Alamo with John Wayne a few days after March 2nd, Texas Independence Day at the actual Alamo, on their grounds. We'd gone the year before, but the second time we had some special guests. It was a balmy March, not very cold. When I got to the battle scene in the movie, there was what I can only describe as a cold wind that blew through and stayed for a moment. And after the battle scene was over, about 10 minutes, it got warmish again. It's said that the ghosts of the men who died there still dwell. I firmly believe this, as does my mom, who was also there, that it was those ghosts. And this is a story about Evelyn from Dr. Corey. This one happened to my mom. My mom had worked with a woman named Evelyn, and eventually this woman died. Mom began to notice that some strange instances were occurring, like a loaf of bread she didn't want would fall off the shelf, even if it wasn't just hanging off, ready to drop, or other random things like that. Mom would call out, Evelyn, I don't need that and so on. As it happened, my mom also knew this woman's granddaughter and was convinced that this had something to do with it. This went on for close to 10 years, and one day, mom found out that the granddaughter and her husband were going to take Evelyn's house and property, fixing it up and everything. My mom called out, Evelyn, your granddaughter will be okay. You don't have to worry anymore. And with that, Evelyn stopped. So yeah, Corey, those are really creepy. And you sent in some more, so I'm going to have to save those other stories for a future Campfire Tales. And thank you so much, Dr. Corey, for sending those in. I get so excited about all the spooky ghost stories. And I have never visited the Alamo, but I have heard that it is very haunted. Uh, So looks like I need to take a trip to Texas. (laughs) So yeah, you know, I will say, I think that when it comes to ghost stories, especially like the story you sent in about Evelyn, a lot of people say that they have instances where it's someone that they know that may be hanging around just to let them know that they were okay. And you know, one thing that I always, I think is funny when you think about it is that while if ghosts exist, right, we may not be able to see them. They're just human beings, right? And so if you have a positive experience or maybe you have a very good bond with a person in real life, that bond just doesn't go away after the person passes. So maybe it's their way of just checking in on you and seeing if you're okay. And maybe it's a way for them to kind of feel okay too by your presence. So I think that that's a very sweet story. And I I like to think that, you know, ghosts are kind of like guardian angels, right? In a a way, they're just looking out for us, hanging out, (laughs) probably laughing at the things that we're doing when we think no one's watching. So I think that that's really precious. And I will say, I wanted to add in a story of my own for Campfire Tales. I have talked a little bit about the house I live in in past episodes and how I definitely think the house I'm living in is haunted. And it's very strange because there have been three people, um, including my husband and myself, three couples that have lived in this house. And every woman in the couple was an artist in some way. And actually two of the artists that lived here previously are like in museums, which is really crazy. (laughs) Like, um, I know that one of them is in the Dallas Museum, I think is some of her artwork is there. So another reason I need to go to Texas, but 
I found out that the original architect and, and builder of the house actually passed away in the house. And my house is very long and it's got some long hallways. And there are times where I, like not too long ago, I was actually sitting downstairs and I was on my computer and it was like probably nine o'clock at night. And I was sitting there and of course I'm like focused looking down at my laptop, you know, typing away. And there's a little area next to the sectional that I was in downstairs. And I felt what I thought was my husband walk right by me. And I could feel like the breeze. I could kind of out of my side vision, see like his shadow walking next to me. And I go to say something and look up and turn around to say something to him. And no one's there. (laughs) And I literally sat there for a second. And I was like, okay, so I know for a fact something just walked right by me because it was like a, a human shape. I felt the, the energy shift. I felt the breeze of someone walking by. And I was like sitting there and I was stumped because I was like, okay, yet another thing that happened in this crazy house. And I will say, when I talk about like feeling the energy, I've never felt like it was a negative energy in this house. In fact, I, I kind of find myself when we're doing changes to the house, like talking to the previous owners as if they're just standing right next to me. Like, I hope you guys like this. Like we've even kept some of the previous art in the home from people who owned it. So I really try to like keep that in mind. But um, I just thought it was a weird story. But yeah, so If any of you have had any weird stories like that, or if you have had like occurrences like all over your entire life where you felt like maybe there's been a presence with you, I would love to know. And also with that being said, if anybody has visited the Bell Witch Cave or the Bell Witch Area properties or the Alamo or Salt Fork, please let us know. I would love to know if anybody else has had any occurrences in these areas. Or if you feel like maybe there's just like a, you know, little ghost you know, hitchhiking along your life with you. (laughs) I don't know. I can't explain it. I wish that there was a way I could explain it, but yeah, creepy. But yeah, so that's my, that's my little campfire tale for this, this episode. I'm sure I have a lot more because I've lived in some really creepy areas and I, you know, I, I always talk about how over the years I've always had these occurrences. So, uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this little story time. And in the meantime, make sure to go to campcryptedpod.com. There's a little contact section where you can write in with your submission or your story or experience. I'd love to read about it and then we can all kind of bond over more creepy stories. So, but yeah, I want to thank everyone so much for hanging out for another episode. If you guys are liking what you're hearing, make sure to go leave me a review on Apple or Spotify. It makes my day when I see that you guys enjoy these and thank y'all for listening to my voice every week. (laughs) Now, the good news is I think everybody on my Patreon is voted, and I think the topic for next week is going to be ghost ships. I'm so excited to get back on this ease and talk about some ghostly stories of some ships that are haunted and maybe some mysteries of the ocean as well. So I told y'all I belong on the ocean. I believe it in my heart. (laughs) I need to go become a captain of a ship now. So yeah. But yeah, thanks so much again, everybody, for hanging out. You all rock, and I hope you're having an amazing week so far. And I hope you're off to, you know, uh, getting some good, exciting things going on for the weekend and some good food and just having a good time. So yeah. And yeah, I want to thank everybody so much again for hanging out for another episode. I want to thank you all so much for blessing me with being able to not only like read about your stories and bond with you all over these creepy stories and experiences, but And also, you guys are blessing me with being able to go read about mysteries of the ocean with all these ghost ships. So (laughs) you all rock. So yeah, thanks so much, y'all. Have a great weekend. And until next time, take care.